In this video, we are going to look at the Unit 7, Lesson 14, Practice Problems. So in this first one, it says Jade is finding the area of a sector with an angle of pi over 4 radians and a radius of 8. She found the area of the whole circle, then found the fraction represented by the sector by dividing pi over 4 by 360, and she multiplied this fraction by the total circle. Do we agree with her strategy or not? And then let's find the area of the sector. Um, so her strategy is not wrong. Like the idea of finding the portion of the circle, multiplying that by the area is not wrong. It's when she um, figures out the portion that she goes wrong because she's got radians and degrees that she's comparing. So radians, needs she needs to figure out the portion of 2 pi, not 360 degrees. So figure out how much pi over 4 is out of 2 pi and apply that um, fraction to the, to the total area. So if we kind of look at this is pi and then pi over 4 would be here. And so that means this top half is being split into four equal pieces. So the bottom half would be split into four equal pieces as well. So pi over 4 is actually equal to 1 eighth of the circle. So we could find the area of this circle is the radius squared, 64 times pi, and then divide it by 8 or multiply by 1 eighth to get that the area of the sector is 8 pi, and then units squared. Number two, which slice of pizza gives, gives the best value, the most pizza per dollar spent? So we'd want to start, we'd want to calculate the areas of these and then use these central angles to help us. So let's um, go ahead and get the total area by squaring the radius and multiplying by pi. So the area of this first um, pizza total is 144 pi. This next one would be 64 pi. 36 pi, so just finding the radius, squaring it, and multiplying by pi. Um, and then 36 pi for this final one as well. Then taking a look at how much um, is the area of the sector that we have by using the central angle and figuring out what portion of the circle it is. So 30 degrees, if we do 360 divided by 30, that gives us 12 equal pieces. So we'll divide this by 12. So the area of our slice is going to be 12 pi. And then um, if we want the most pizza per dollar, okay, so pizza per dollar, you'll do pizza divided by the money, and that'll tell you per one dollar. So if I take 12 pi and divide it by three, I'm getting four pi per one dollar that I spend. Okay, so four pi inches squared pizza per dollar. So this next one, 45, is one eighth of the circle. So we'll divide by eight here. And we'll get that the slice is eight pi inches squared for its area. And then we know that they're charging us two dollars here. So we'll divide by two. And so here we're getting four pi per one dollar as well. And let me write this dollar the, actually the correct way. I don't know why I wrote it backwards there, per one dollar. Okay, so per one dollar. Um, so these are actually costing, you know, the same amount or you're getting equivalent amounts here. Pi over three we know is one sixth of the circle. So if we think about it as splitting this top half into three slices, the bottom would be split, split into three slices as well, knowing that's pi. So this is one sixth of the circle. So we'll divide this by six. Our slice is six pi inches squared. This is costing us $2 per slice. So we are getting three pi inches squared per dollar. So this one is less than those. We're getting more per dollar in A and B than we are in C. Um, pi over 4 is 1 eighth of the circle, so we'll take and divide this by 8, and that's going to be 4.5 pi inches squared, and now this is per $1, okay, so this is already our unit cost. So this one's getting us 4.5 times pi 
inches squared for the slice. So this is the best deal. We're getting the most pizza per dollar um, in D. Number three, the circle in the image has been divided into congruent sectors. What's the measure of the central angle in radians? So we know that um, halfway around the circle is pi radians. So we know that this is pi. So if we took a look at how many slices it's being split into, so it's being split into five equal chunks. So each piece is pi over five and we've shaded two of them. So two pi over five radians. Um, number four says in the circle sketch a central angle that's equal to five pi over three. Um, so we want five, if we think about this fraction, we want five pi over threes. And we know again that pi is halfway through the circle. So if we split the if we split the top and bottoms into three equal pieces, okay, we want five of these. So we know each of these little ones is pi over three. And we want five of those. Um, so that would be one, two, three, four, five. So this would be a five pi over three angle, approximately. Number five, the image shows a circle with a radius of five. Draw 180 degree central angle, which is a diameter. In the circle, what's the length of the arc defined? Okay, so here's our diameter. And remember, for arc length, it's equal to the radius times the central angle in, radi in radians. And we know that this is a radian measure of pi. So the arc length is going to be five times pi. So just the radian measure times the radius. Then use the arc length and the radius to calculate um, the radian measure for um, 180 degrees, which I guess we already did. That's pi. So if you wanted to think about it here, this is half the circle. So this is kind of before you knew radians for this one. So what they're trying to get, to, get us to do here actually was calculate the circumference which is um, pi times the diameter. So if the radius is five, then the diameter is 10. So the circumference is 10 pi, and this is half of it. So divided by two would mean that my arc length is five pi. So not using this formula. So this would have been five pi. And then calculating the arc length using the, or sorry, the radian measure using your radian formula, which is theta equals the arc length divided by the radius, arc length being 5 pi, radius being 5, and we'll get that theta is equal to pi. So then we know that this radian measure is pi. Calculate the radian measure of a 360 degree angle. Okay, well, 360 degrees would be this entire way. So we would take the circumference, okay, which is 10 pi, right? So we know that. And our theta is going to be our arc length. So our arc length for a 360 degree angle is the whole thing, 10 pi, divided by the radius, which is 5. So for the whole circle, the radian measure is 2 pi. So you could have thought about it that way. Or knowing that this bottom part is pi also, so pi plus pi is 2 pi. Complete the table below. Each row represents a circle with a defined sector. Okay, so here's our um, area. So they're giving us the, our sector area and they're giving us our radius. Let's figure out the central angle. So if we um, know that the radius here is, is five centimeters, then we know that the total area is 25 pi. And our sector is five pi out of that. So our sector is one-fifth of the whole circle, if we simplify that. And so the central angle, angle is going to be a fifth of it. And if we want it in degrees like the rest of these, then we do one-fifth of 360. And a fifth of 360, so you could do 360 divided by 5. And you will get 72 degrees for that. 
For this one, our sector area is 12 pi and our degree is 270. So we know that we've got 3 fourths of the circle because we know that 270 is 3 fourths of the circle. Um, and so we've got, let's split this. If we know we have fourths, okay, and we've got 3 fourths, so 12 pi is going to equal 3 um, fourths of the circle. So let's divide 12 pi by 3. And that would give us 4 pi for each of these fourths. So all the same, 3 fourths gives us 12. So then the total area would be 16 if we add in another one. And so then this is our total area, so this is our radius squared. So then our radius would be 4 centimeters. Um, and then if we have a radius given to us at 12, then our total area here would be 144 pi. And then we want a 15 degree chunk. So we're going to want to figure out either how many slices, so how many times does 15 go into 360? So we could do 360 divided by 15 and get 24. So then just divide this by... 24, so 144 divided by 24 is 6 pi. So that's one way. You could also write the 15 as a fraction out of 360 times your total area and calculate that way and still come up with 6 pi centimeters squared for that sector area. All right, number seven, seven, several circles are with central angles are described. Select all for which the central angle defines arcs that have lengths of six pi. Okay, so arc length is circumference. Okay, it's part of the circumference. So if the radius is six, the diameter is 12, so your circumference here is 12 pi. 180 is half the circle. So divide that by two and you get a six pi arc for A. For B, the radius is 18, so the diameter is 36, so the total circumference is 36 pi. Central angle here is 60, that's one-sixth of the circle. Okay, so we'll divide by 6, and we get 6 pi for this arc length as well. And if you don't know how much it is, right, you can do 360 divided by 180, that's going to be two equal slices. Okay, or 360 divided by 60 gives us six slices. Um, radius is 12, so circumference, so diameter is 24, so circumference is 24 pi. 90 is one fourth of the circle, so divide by four, and each, um, whoops, each chunk here will be six pi for the arc. So this one is good as well. D, so 3 is the radius, 6 is the diameter, so 6 pi is the circumference. Um, so 120 degree arc will not equal to 6 pi since 6 pi is the whole way around. So this for sure is wrong without even calculating it. Um, and then this final one, the radius is 4, so the diameter is 8. So our circumference in this one is 8 pi. And 270 is 3 fourths of the circle, okay? So I'm going to just multiply this by 3 fourths then instead of dividing into equal chunks. So I'm going to multiply by 3 fourths. So then that's going to be 24 pi over 4, which is 6 pi. You could think about doing it this way and you want 3 fourths of it, okay? Um, and so dividing 8 into 4 equal chunks. So each chunk is 2 pi for the arc, and then you're looking at just to 270, and so 2, 4, 6 pi for that as well. All right, number 8 um, says that a triangle is shown with its in center. The inscribed circle's radius measure is 2. The length of AB is 9. The length of BC is 10 and the length of AC is 17, okay? So I'm just going to write them kind of further off to the side, meaning this whole thing 
BC is 10 and AC is 17. What's the area of triangle ABD? So let's get um, ABD drawn on here. So here's ABD. And then they told us that um, the radius of the inscribed circle is 2. So this one is 2. And we know that the radius hits this um, side at a 90 degree angle. So we know that that's considered the height of this green triangle. So the base is 9 times the height is 2 divided by 2 for area of a triangle. Base times height divided by 2. So we get 9 units squared for that green triangle area there. And maybe I'll turn this to green. Um, then this question asks, what's the area of triangle BCD? Okay, so BCD is here. And so again, we'll have the base is 10. Okay, and that height is 2. So we're going to do 10 times 2 divided by 2. So we're just going to get 10 units squared for that red triangle. And again, the work for that is base times height divided by 2. And then the 2s would cancel. All right, then question number 9. Noah makes three statements about the in-center of a triangle. To find the in-center of a triangle, you must construct all three angle bisectors. Second statement, the in-center is always equidistant from the vertices. Third statement, the in-center is always equidistant from each side of the triangle. For each statement, decide whether you agree with Noah or not and explain your reasoning. Um, so the first statement, you do construct the angle bisectors to get the in-center. That's certainly true. But you don't have to technically construct all three. You really only need two because once you get two, Okay, once you get this angle bisector and this angle bisector, they're going to connect. And then you'll know they'll intersect. There's only one spot they can intersect. That has to be the in-center. So you really only need to do two. The in-center is always equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. That's not true. Okay, here's the in-center of your circle. It's always equidistant from the sides. Okay, because it touches each of the sides. The circle touches each of the sides, not the vertices. Okay, so that is not true either, um, which is because it's the sides, because statement, the third statement is true. 